Hello YouTube, PsychoFox here. So just a quick video regarding this, an Amiga 500 Trapdoor RAM expansion. Uh, this is um, made by Memory Expansion Systems Limited in 1989. It's got a bit of a, a bit of code there. Side 1, Issue 2. And obviously that's uh, Side 2, Issue 2. So yeah, the problem with this is uh, it wasn't working. And so I reseated the RAM chips, tested for continuity, and what I found was, as I suspected, this switch is very creaky and it's got a lot of play in it. I wasn't happy with it. So, I followed the traces, and obviously, when it's when the switch is on the on position, which it says on is up, between here and here, so the power comes onto the board, there was no continuity whether the switch was on or off and by the looks of the traces there should have been so what I've gone and done is I uh, just run a wire between the two uh, yeah apologies for my soldering my iron is on its last legs but it does the job it's got continuity and I've tested it so that should um, that should really sort of force the board into being on all the time making this switch redundant so I don't know really why you want to turn the RAM off anyway maybe there's some programs that you know the extra RAM conflicted with so that should now be 512k extra RAM for the Amiga hello puss whoa extreme close up there for cat uh, yeah so I'm really hoping this works because uh, there's not much information on this board actually on the internet I've replaced that capacitor there as well but that, that, didn't, that didn't do anything so I'm hoping this fixes the issue because uh, otherwise I'll have to buy another one I don't like don't like spending money when I don't have to and I'd like to um get this board working because this is the one that came with Amiga uh, everything about this Amiga has been hard won uh, I had to rebuild the power supply its uh, SCART cable was knackered um, and the memory expansion module was faulty so if this is working it's the last little step uh, the floppy drive is knackered as well I've had to replace that with a GoTech uh, so yeah right without delay let's plug it in and see uh, see if that's fixed it okay so I've got the trapdoor RAM back in place and I'm just booting up workbench 1.3 from the GoTech obviously there's no um, there's no uh, real-time clock on this expansion board there's no battery so that's one less thing that could go wrong so yeah that switch was always going to be the weak point so I'm hoping this fix has worked. There's the Amiga loads in eerie silence. And what we got here, let's just um just the focus. Yep, eight eight seven one zero four free memory. So we've got our extra 512k there. That we showing three, uh, three, three something before then. But half what it should have. Excellent. So now I can play some uh, games that need the expanded RAM. So uh, Super Frog, here we come. Okay, so I've got Super Frog selected on the old uh, GoTech here. This is a game that does require one meg of RAM. So let's just. Uh, start that up. This is the point where I was getting a RAM, uh, RAM error. There's that cat again. It is our cat. It's not just some random cat that's walking around the house. Yay, accessing disk. Right, so that's a good that's a good sign. We've got the full complement of RAM. Come on, cat, come and see Super Frog. Come here. Good puss. Yeah, so it's um, it's a great piece of kit, this, but obviously it's still floppy, uh, floppy disk loading times. It's just odd without the noise. Ah, there we are. Sorry about the reflection, guys, on the screen. Brilliant. 
well. Absolutely fantastic. Easy fix, yeah. So, yeah, if you've got this problem, always look at the switch. It's not necessarily... Um, not necessarily a broken trace or faulty uh, RAM chips. I mean, this board hasn't even got a timekeeper clock on it, so it's not um, not a leaking battery. But brilliant, happy with that. Well, I hope this has been uh, helpful to someone out there. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>